Hello everyone. Sincere thanks for your strong support again. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on angle modulation. For this video, I'm going to explain why frequency modulation sort of taking over the amplitude modulation. Amplitude modulation, in fact, is one of the earliest types of modulation. For example, okay, I think you probably have not seen this AM receiver, okay, which means that it's a radio broadcast. We don't have this AM receiver anymore. What we have in Singapore, for example, only left the FM radio broadcast. So to this video, I'm going to share with you why FM actually sort of taken over the amplitude modulation. Amplitude modulation, actually, there is still application, especially in an aerospace environment. In the next future video, I probably will share with you how this amplitude modulation is used in an aerospace environment. This will be the part two series discussion. The earlier on series discussion, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about frequency modulation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this video. Once again, sincere thanks for your support and time. Let me activate the animation. Okay, so in this diagram, show both the amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. If you still remember what we have discussed on the previous video, this is a modulating signal. The modulating signal is also called the intelligent signal or the baseband signal. This is the information that we want to send over to the recipient. This is the carrier, like the name imply, the carrier actually helps to carry the information over. So this is what we call a modulated signal. Modulated signal basically combine the modulating signal and carrier. And for amplitude modulation, the signal actually happen at the amplitude of the modulated signal. Again, you can see over here, this is the modulating signal. You can see that the modulating signal actually appeared at the envelope of the modulated signal. So this is what we meant for amplitude modulation. As for frequency modulation, it's actually slightly different. Okay, again, this is the modulating signal. Again, this is also the signal that we want to send over the, to the recipient. This is a carrier. Okay, what happened here is basically for frequency modulation, we have the modulated signal. This, you can see that the amplitude remain constant. So how does the modulated signal represent the modulating signal? Okay, for this case here, if you still again refer to the previous video, you can see that when the modulating signal is at the highest amplitude, you can see that basically they are represented by higher frequency. If this modulating signal has the lowest amplitude, you can see that basically they have the lowest frequency at the modulated signal. So this is how frequency modulation actually represent at modulated signal over here. Why, okay, why angle modulation? Okay, why we need to use angle modulation over amplitude modulation? So we quickly go through what are the advantage of FM or PM over AM. Firstly, okay, if we have this angle modulation, which means frequency modulation or phase modulation, we actually require lesser transmission power. And we, if we can reduce the transmission power, it will be more effective. And also one of the crucial advantage of FM or PM over AM is basically noise reduction. And because with frequency modulation or phase modulation, we actually can have a better signal fidelity, okay, which means that the sound will be much more clear. Okay, let's take a look on this diagram in order to understand better. For example, this is for amplitude modulation. Let's say this is the modulated signal that is sent over the air. So basically, it reached the receiver and basically, I have this AM detector to recover back the modulating signal. Remember, for AM modulation, the modulating signal basically appear at the envelope of the signal. So if there's a noise here, you can see that basically the noise will also 
present at the final stage of the AM detector here. So basically the noise actually exists together with the original signal and this is undesired. Instead of the original signal, we also have noise that will be able to leak into the AM detector. As for frequency modulation or phase modulation, okay, you again, the noise also appear at the amplitude of the modulated signal. And this modulated signal actually received by the FM detector. Okay, remember for frequency modulation, if you still remember, okay, the, how we actually can decode this is basically based on frequency rather than amplitude. Hence with this, we can see that this is higher frequency. So basically it has the highest amplitude. And let's say this is the lowest frequency. You actually can denote that this actually represents the lowest amplitude of the modulating signal. So basically from here, you can see that even noise coupled onto the modulated signal, this actually don't play any role in terms of recovering back the original modulating signal. Hence over here, you can see that this noise were actually eliminated if we have this frequency modulation or phase modulation. Okay, let's do a detailed study. Okay, in AM, information is carried in the change of carrier amplitude. In FM, information is carried in a change of carrier frequency. The carrier amplitude carry no information. Okay, which means over here, the amplitude don't carry any information. The information is actually at the frequency for FM modulation. So therefore, over here, you can see here at the receiving end of the FM system, only frequency component of the FM signal will be extracted up during the modulation. So this is what I mean. Basically, when we actually decode the message, we basically extract the frequency, but not on the amplitude. We extract the frequency and basically we recover back the original modulating signal. Any noise that was superimposed on the FM signal has therefore no effect on the recovered modulating signal. Okay, so this is what you can see over here. So this is the original signal that we sent over to the recipient. You can see from here for AM and for frequency modulation, you can see that for AM, the noise actually couple and actually add onto the amplitude of the signal. At the other end here on the AM detector, you can actually still see the noise. But for frequency modulation, when noise actually couple over the modulated signal, you can see over here there is no more noise because how we decode the modulating signal is basically based on the frequency but not on the amplitude. So this is one of the biggest advantage of FM or PM over AM. So this is a reason why FM or PM have taken over amplitude modulation. Let's come to the disadvantage of FM or PM over AM. Okay, firstly, for FM or PM, we actually require a larger bandwidth to send the same amount of data over as compared to amplitude modulation. So this is the first disadvantage. Another disadvantage of FM and PM, basically they require much, much complex circuitry as compared over the AM. So basically these are the two disadvantages of FM or PM. But the advantage of FM and PM over AM definitely outweigh everything. So therefore, because of this, most of the time you probably will not see much application on amplitude modulation anymore. Majority will be on frequency modulation or phase modulation. Okay, let's do this in order to understand the frequency modulation concept. Okay, the frequency of the carrier at any instant basically can be expressed in this equation here. Okay, so this is the equation that expressed as the frequency that carry the data. And you can see from this equation here, you can see that the carrier frequency actually at the instant change of the frequency. So basically they can be expressed in this equation here. So again, if you still remember, how does frequency modulation work is basically we change the frequency of the modulated signal with respect to the modulating signal. So you can see that this is actually the modulating signal that add into this 
so called the instantaneous frequency that add on to the overall frequency. Okay, so over here you can see that this is the modulating signal. So the modulating signal can be expressed in this form. And if you still remember, okay, for example, this part here, okay, we can actually define as this shown over here. So this change in F, we call this is a peak frequency deviation. This KF is we call a frequency sensitivity of a FM modulator. Okay, so this EM is actually the amplitude of the modulating signal. So again, from here, you can see that we rearrange this become the formula to express any instant frequency as mentioned over here. The peak frequency deviation, okay, which means that the maximum changes in terms of the frequency deviation, okay, basically they denote the maximum change of the instantaneous carrier frequency from its unmodulated carrier frequency FC. Okay, so take a look over this diagram here. Okay, so basically this is what it means, the maximum peak frequency deviation. So this is basically represent the highest amplitude of the modulating signal. On the other side, this actually indicate the lowest amplitude of the modulating signal. So if you still remember, basically the this arrow, you can imagine they basically shift with different points of the frequency here to indicate the amplitude of the modulating signal. Okay, hopefully you still remember all this. Let's quickly do an example to understand this. A modulating signal, okay, basically this modulating signal has these characteristics. EM is equal to 2, frequency is equal to 4000 here. It's used to frequency modulate a carrier signal. Okay, so this is actually the carrier signal characteristics. Given the frequency sensitivity KF as 4 kilohertz per volt, determine the following. So I need to determine the peak frequency deviation, the modulation index, and the range of the carrier frequency swing. Okay, so let's do this first. Basically, this is the modulating signal from the equation. So this is in general how we can actually express a modulating signal. So from here, I can see that EM is equal to 2. Okay, so this is basically the VP of the modulating signal. Frequency, as I mentioned, is actually 4000, which also 4 kilohertz here. So this is given by the question, if you still remember. Okay, this uh, question here mentioned, this KF frequency sensitivity is 4 kilohertz per book. So this is actually given by the question. So I need to do this. Firstly, I need to find the peak frequency deviation. Okay, so this is governed by this equation, if you still remember. Over here, governed by this equation here. So the question given to me, this frequency sensitivity is actually 4 kilohertz multiplied by EM, which is 2. So I actually work up that the peak frequency deviation is 8 kilohertz. Modulation index okay, is actually peak frequency deviation divided by the frequency of the modulating signal. Okay, so this one I have found, which is 8 kilohertz. The question given to me, the frequency of the modulating signal is 4 kilohertz. So from here, I can compute that the modulation index is equal to 2. Next, I'm also tasked to find the range of the carrier frequency swing. Okay, remember, this is the so-called the carrier frequency. And if you take a look over here, this is basically the carrier frequency, which is 100 mag. Okay, so 100 meg plus minus the maximum peak frequency of 8 kilohertz. So basically, I can see that the maximum carrier frequency swing is from 99.992 megahertz to 100.008 megahertz. So with this, I'm actually ready to draw the diagram here. So this is actually the carrier frequency, which is 100 megahertz over here. It is swing from 99.992 to 100.008. And the peak frequency deviation is 8 kilohertz. So I done with this example. Thank you so much. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you.